Howdy folks. So I thought I made this video a couple months ago, but as it turns out, I didn't. So I'm going to make it now, and I hope I don't forget too many of the details. Um, if you're interested in more of a sort of ramble about uh, my uh, you know, home lab and my equipment and uh, you know where I got this server, what I did with the old one, all that kind of stuff, I'm going to split that out into another video, and I'm going to have a link in the description to that, um, just so I can keep this video focused on uh, the topic at hand, uh, just in case you know people are arriving at this and they're not normal subscribers. Um, so this is a Supermicro uh, 846, 847 uh, 4U chassis, and um, Supermicro's chassis have been very similar for a very long time, and uh, so if, if you have you know, anything made in the last you know, decade or so, it'll probably look um, pretty much like this, but this applies to any server Really, uh, I think you can adapt this to most servers. However, uh, any of the specific uh, stuff is, is going to be tailored to Supermicro in this video, but uh, you should be able to adapt this to any size server from any manufacturer. So this, uh, this machine is normally quite a bit louder than this. Um, and so uh, I, I, it's not going to, unfortunately, just due to the way that the mic and the gain and everything works, um, it's difficult to really say how loud this is. I actually do have a sound meter, but uh, again, this is very quiet compared to what this machine originally uh, sounded like. So this is the noise level with the original fans. And this is how loud it is after the fan change. And yes, it is indeed powered on. This is not a joke. It is on. It is running. And the fan wall for this machine originally looks like this. So it's two pieces and it holds seven different fans. So the, the side that's facing me now is the uh, front of the server and then this is the uh, rear. That's where the exhaust is. So there's three fans here which do the motherboard and then one fan which does the power supplies and the um, power distributor. And uh, the fans just snap in, and the fans that Supermicro ships with these are these Nidec Ultra Flow, um, or realistically just any 80 millimeter high flow fan. Um, so they're not 25 millimeters thick, I think they're 35, they're a little bit thicker than normal, uh, but they're just 80 millimeter fans, and I think, I, I can't remember what these go up to, I think it's like seven or 8,000 RPM. Um, and so they, yeah, they're quite loud, especially if you have all seven of them. And um, I had originally tried to quiet this server down um, many years ago, or the original server that I had here. Again, this is actually a different server than the one that uh, I originally had. I, I got this server recently, in the last few months, and that's why I, uh, I thought now would be a good time to tackle the, uh, the sound issue, because the server that I originally had um, was the, almost the exact same machine, just uh, you know, a generation or so older, and I, when I got that machine, which was a couple years prior, I had tried to quiet it down, and I failed. So uh, I, I wanted to take a different crack at it. So originally what I had done was I had tried to replace these fans here with uh, something more you know, consumer-oriented and quieter. So something like, for example, uh, this is just a Noctua Redux you know, NFR8 um, fan. And so this is also 80 millimeters, so it's the same size, uh, but of course it's only... 25 uh, millimeters thick, so of course you have the thickness difference. And you can use, uh, you know, if you want to, this is again super micro specific, but if you want to replace these fans with another fan, uh, regardless of whether it's, it's this one or a proper, you know, server fan, if they fail, you can do that. Um, it's pretty easy. You just take the four screws out of the caddy, and then there's this little clip here which you remove. Um, you do have to get a, a screwdriver under it to pop it off. And then all you need to do is take the, the four pin connector on your your, your new fan, and uh, it's got these two guides on it, and you just have to dremel off um, the guide that's sort of in the middle, because the guide on the, uh, the original fan, um, it's, it's slightly over. So once you've, you've done that, you can just uh, slot in the, uh, your modified 4-pin and uh, you know, screw it in, and you're okay. The only thing you'll have to do, uh, if you go with a thinner fan, which I don't recommend doing, but if you do that, uh, again, you'll just have to dremel out this this section here. Just remove this little bit here so that uh, it doesn't interfere 
with the uh, the corner of the fan. The other option is actually to Dremel the fan, but I'd, I'd recommend doing the caddy. And if you want to ever go back to a thick fan, you can always do that. So that's what I did. I originally made uh, a bunch of fans with 80 millimeter, uh, you know, sort of consumer um, desktop fans. And it had two problems, um, one of which was the primary one was primarily it just it just wasn't enough airflow, uh, and that's going to be the biggest problem with trying to use quiet fans in a server chassis like this is just the amount of airflow that comes out of these fans is just nowhere near what's necessary to cool uh, the server because this machine uses passive um, heat sinks on the CPUs, so it's two CPUs and there's no fans on the CPUs, so it relies on case airflow. And it's got add-in cards, of course, at the end, and those add-in cards also don't have fans, so they require a certain amount of linear feet per minute to stay properly cooled. Um, and these just could not produce that. So what I did, ultimately, for the last couple of years, is I reduced the number of fans from seven to four. So, um, oh, God, this is kind of a awkward thing here because it's not together. This actually comes apart, by the way. You can actually take out a screw and you can lift this out so you can get it out of your, your system easier. Uh, but basically what I did was I just removed these um, these three fans here. So these three got removed, and I had one fan here, and then um, three fans here. Um, you want to remove these ones, not these ones, because you have, of course, a fan shroud on here, and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, and that, of course, if you put the fans here, then the air would just escape out these gaps here. You'd have to block this off or just use that. So I had four fans, and there was really no reason to have the seven in here, because with four fans, you have absolutely enough airflow. Um, and of course, if any of these fans fails when the system is running, um, the board management controller freaks out, thinks it's dying, and it puts all the rest of the fans to 100%. And one of these fans is honestly enough to cool a server like this at full RPM. It's pretty ridiculous. Um, and of course, I run the, the, uh, the fan controller with its normal sort of optimal profile, um, which runs them at a relatively low, you know, couple thousand RPM. Um, but even with four fans at, you know, the lowest RPM it would go, it's really unfortunately quite loud. So I wanted to make something better um, and I wasn't going to just go the 80 route, 80 millimeter route again. So I knew that in order to make this work I needed to use bigger fans. So in order to successfully cool the system um, with you know slower quieter fans I would need larger fans than 80 millimeter because um, when you think about it the hub of the fan in the middle where the motor is is it's a relatively fixed size so um, as you make the fan smaller and smaller, the blade area is what goes down. Um, and so the larger the fan, uh, the more blade area, and therefore you, know, you can move a higher volume of air with lower RPM. Um, so really what we want is we want a bigger fan. Um, and so that means this fan wall, unfortunately, is really not suited uh, for this anymore because it's designed for 80 millimeter fans and there really isn't a good way to put larger fans on here. Um, so larger, when I say larger, we can either do 92 millimeter, 120 mil, or 140 mil. Um, those are the standard sizes for fans. Now, 92 mil is out immediately because it's stupid. Um, it's not that much bigger than 80 mil, and it's also not that common, so fans are going to be, you know, less available. So really, 120 or 140 is what we're looking for. And um, they aren't going to fit very well on this. You could obviously unscrew these posts, but then the holes don't line up, and you end up blocking off airflow and... How do you mount stuff to this? It, 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 unfortunately, this doesn't work out. So um, the first thing that we have to do is, of course, replace the fan wall. And I've seen people do this a couple different ways. One way would be to th uh, 3D print some brackets um, to install other fans, but I don't have a 3D printer. And some people have gotten them sort of laser cut out of sheet steel and, and made little like metal plates. Uh, I don't have a laser cutter. Uh, and other people have made them out of wood. And uh, I, I can do woodworking, I can borrow some tools and do that. Um, but I instead came up with a solution that requires um, no tools, um, literally you can get by with the stuff in your kitchen, and I think it actually provides a better solution as far as noise goes. Um, and it's quite cheap and easy to do, and I've done it on two servers, and so that's what I want to go over. So here's a look inside uh, this server, and uh, we'll get to the fan wall in just a moment. So just to give you an idea of what's in here, uh, there's two uh, six-core CPUs, so there's 24 threads with hyper-threading, 128 gigs of DDR4, uh, we've got a dual port uh, InfiniBand 
a DDRX4 card and a uh, Broadcom slash LSI, you know, they, they bought out LSI, so it's a SAS 3000 series card here. And, um, and as for the power supplies, there's, there are two one kilowatt um, redundant supplies uh, at 120 volts. They're 1.3 kilowatts at 240. Um, and they have the dash SQ suffix on them, um, which means super quiet. And that's actually very important because if you do a modification like this, uh, the power supply will then become the next uh, sort of loudest component. And there's actually two fans in these power supplies. It looks like there's one, but there's actually two back-to-back, -back, one thin one and one thick one. They have different blade designs. And um, if, so if you have a super micro chassis, uh, look for the SQ uh, suffix power supplies um, because uh, they, they are what you want. They are actually incredibly quiet for a server power supply because they use 40 millimeter fans. And uh, 40 millimeter fans are, are really hard to make um, quiet just because, you know, the tiny, tiny amount of air that they move, they have to spin very fast. And so they do a very good job in these. And uh, I'll point out, I'll show you, in a, you know, later in the video, I tried to actually replace one of those with, you know, a, like a really, really low, uh, low noise fan, and it actually turned out that those, um, those actually made it worse. So the SQ is the quietest you can get, as far as I know, um, so don't try to screw with that. Uh, and really, th those will become some of the loudest uh, components in the system once you're done. Uh, that and the hard drives, you'll actually hear the hard drives. Um, and uh, the system is mostly idle right now, um, so you probably will hear it every once in a while, but not too much. Um, but realistically, that's the level of, of quietness that, that uh, I've achieved out of this system, is you can hear the power supply and just the hard drives. Um, so the main server fans are very, very quiet. And so the solution that uh, I came up with to making a fan wall uh, was to use foam. So the, the type of foam that I, uh, I wanted was something that was closed cell and relatively... Uh, stiff, because um, I, I didn't want like a sponge kind of, uh, you know, very floppy foam. And so what I, I settled on was the same material that they used to make um, sort of those interlocking puzzle style floor tiles. And uh, I, I can't remember the name of it, I think it's like E-D-E-E-P-E, -E -E -E. I'll, I'll, I'll put a title in, you know, as to what it actually is called. But um, that material is, is readily available and it's not terribly expensive to use. And I actually found that the best, uh, as far as, as, as cost and uh, form factor goes, for using this, this material um, to cut up and make a fan wall is um, like kneeling pads. So they're, they're sold as just you know, blocks that you kneel on so that you don't destroy your kneecaps. And um, the, the reason why I like these is because you know, they're readily available, they're not very expensive, and um, not all of them, but, but some of them, they're just larger than the size of a 4U chassis. So as far as, um, you know, the, the, the width and the height goes. So, um, you know, you, you, you don't have to, you do have to cut stuff off the edges, but it's, uh, you know, it's just large enough. And the thickness, the thickness is another big deal. So it's about 35 millimeters thick. So it's thicker than a 25 millimeter fan. And the reason why I wanted to use foam um, is, well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, you can cut foam with a kitchen knife. You don't need any fancy tools to make this. Just buy it, you know, measure some stuff, and cut. The, the second thing is, you don't need any fasteners. Because what you do is, if you intentionally undersize the holes for the fans, um, and if you intentionally oversize the fan wall, uh, because it's foam, it's compliant, and so you get a friction fit around everything. And so you don't have to worry about fastening the, you know, the fans into the wall and the wall into the chassis. Um, and they won't go anywhere. Um, and that's really nice. Uh, you don't have to worry with fasteners or glues or anything. Um, and this is the reason why I wanted the thicker, um, the thicker foam, because you have an overhang on both sides, which grips the fan and keeps it in place. Um, the other advantage of foam is that it is naturally uh, vibration damping. So the fans uh, will not transfer nearly as much of their vibration through the foam to the metal chassis, which of course acts just like a big speaker. Um, so this also adds to the, uh, the noise reduction. And the third, the last one, which is, is uh, it depends on how well you make it and how much effort you put in. But again, because foam is compliant, uh, it's possible to create a really good airtight seal around the fan wall 
to prevent any air from escaping, you know, short circuiting and going back to the intake um, rather than, than being pushed uh, through the server. So it allows you to increase the static pressure um, or allow you to get away with fans that are, are worse with static pressure. So those are the reasons why I wanted to deal with foam. So unfortunately, I either have lost or I never took footage of actually making the fan walls. I do have a couple pictures, which I'll put up uh, periodically, but uh, unfortunately, this is one of the things that happens uh, when you do a project, you know, and then you only make a video on it months later. But uh, at least the thing that uh, you will know is that this works very well and it has no issues in, in at least my production environment because it's been working for the last couple months. So to go about making this, obviously, find some... Um, some some foam, however way you want to do it. I use kneeling pads, but you can use whatever foam you want. Um, just, you know, acquire it. Uh, I recommend getting stuff that's thicker than your fans, so greater than 25 millimeters, and make sure that it's larger than your server, obviously, um, unless you want to deal with trying to glue pieces together, which I don't recommend. It's it's not a good, great idea. Um, then you've got to figure out what fans you want to use. And so what I did was I, I knew that realistically, if I want the highest airflow, lowest noise fans, it's going to be by Noctua. Um, it, it, you know, I, I don't work for Noctua. They just make really great fans. So I basically, you know, I did look at other fans, trust me, and nobody came close. So I went through Noctua's uh, data sheets, and I looked at fans and where they were available and how much they cost, and I, I made a spreadsheet of all of the uh, fans that I could get my hands on um, in the 120 and 140 millimeter sizes, and I looked up how many CFM of airflow they had, um, times three fans each, because you can only fit three of each in. Um, you can't squeeze a fourth 120 mil in, it doesn't work. Um, and then I just looked at, you know, what would it cost me, what would the total airflow be, uh, etc. And I settled on three 120 millimeter, 12 volt PWM, that's four pin, uh, industrial PPC fans. So these are the IPPC um, 3000 RPM uh, 120 millimeter Noctua fans. I'll put the part number in. Um, and I went with these because they had the ability to go faster and produce more airflow than any of the other fans, which of course is good. And of course they're PWM, so I can of course drop their, their RPM down to reduce noise. And uh, they, their, their cost was quite good. Now you might wonder, well, why don't you go with the 140 millimeter of the same thing? It produces more, um, you know, more CFM. Yes, that's true. There were two problems with that. First of all, I couldn't get my hands on them. They just weren't available at the time. And the second one is, if you used 140 mils, um, the actual amount of foam in between each fan would shrink. And you get to a point where the structural integrity of the foam may not be all that great. Um, you could probably do 140s. Um, I, I'm not saying you can't, but it's just a little, a little difficult. Um, you just have to be careful you don't rip anything, that's all. And things like glue and stuff I wouldn't recommend because um, it's, it, it doesn't, doesn't flex the way it, it, it really should. So pick your fans and then sort of uh, take some measurements. And, uh, you know, I, I spaced the three fans, you know, equidistant apart. And I made sure that they were high enough on the fan wall that the airflow would, um, you know, correctly be directed over the motherboard, at least in this case. So this case, it's got uh, 12 fan ba or 12 uh, drive bays on the bottom underneath the motherboard. So the motherboard's actually, um, technically, it's a low-profile case because um, the motherboard's mounted up high. So I, I mounted the fans up high as well. And I also put three holes at the bottom for cable pass-throughs. So just like the old fan walls, um, they have uh, their, their sort of little cable doors. So this is what I'm referring to. Um, sort of, I had my holes, and then I had these pass-throughs. Um, so I just cut... Um, holes. I didn't make slots. Um, if the foam that you have is compliant enough, you could just cut a, cut a slot and then sort of force the cables through. And then, of course, it'll seal on the cables and it'll give you a nice, good um, uh, seal. But uh, I found that was too difficult with the foam I had, so I actually cut holes, um, which is fine. And when you take out your fan wall, um, I suspect you're going to find little bits of little rubber squares. Um, and if you're wondering what they're from, it's uh, they're usually from these little doors because you can see they're they're missing uh, quite a number of uh, little things. They always break off. They always get brittle over time. That's just the way it is. So once you've cut the holes and everything, and you've dry, you know, you test fitted the uh, the fans and made sure that they all work, um, you know, fit properly. Then you've got to get the old fan wall out. At least in my chassis, it was pretty easy. There's some screws on the sides, and there's some screws down um, that screw the fan wall to the, the bottom, uh, which you can take out from the top with long screwdrivers. 
Um, and sort of like I showed my fan walls in two pieces, you can actually take them out separately to try and remove them from the case, and they have a nice big cavity, um, clean it all out and everything. Uh, now's the prime opportunity to dust everything, and then it's time to put the new fan wall in. Now, if you have one of these chassis, the, the distance between the uh, power distributor here and the chassis intrusion switch is literally exactly 35 millimeters. So it actually kind of helps in my case, it actually wedges this uh, nicely in here, um, so this doesn't move back and forth. And so you can fit this in, but I had to remove the chassis intrusion switch to install this, and then I put the, the switch in uh, at the end. So you can just uh, unscrew that from the outside or the inside, depending on uh, what, whether you want to remove the bracket or not. And for holding this in, so the, 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 way, that, the way that I did this was by using a shim. So um, I actually just cut like a little triangle wedge, and I just shoved this in, and by shoving it down, it, uh, it you know, creates friction against the side, and so this, this, is, this is sturdily in here, then it doesn't move. Um, so you don't have to, you know, you don't have to do this, um, but this was the easiest way uh, to simply get it in and then secure it, because of course there's this lip on my chassis here, so you can't make this oversized um, on the full width, because then you'll never be able to get it in. Um, because I can't twist it enough sideways to get it in. Um, you know, if, if, I if I took the motherboard tray, maybe I could do that, um, but I wasn't prepared to do that. So I just made a little, uh, a little like door wedge uh, shaped piece from the excess, and I just shoved it in there. And that's sort of like my lock, which locks the fan wall in place. And at that point, you just uh, connect the fans up to your motherboard. Um, now, if you're in a super micro, um, you j you're going to want to make sure that um, you connect. Uh, the fans that are blowing on the CPU to the CPU headers, which are the numbered ones, and then you want to make sure that you connect at least one fan to the uh, the I/O headers, which are the uh, the letters, the A, B, C, um, because I found that some of the motherboards don't they kind of freak out if you don't do that right. Um, and you can reduce the number of fans on any super micro board, um, at least all the ones I've worked with. They they detect fans at boot time, so when they post. They look for RPM, and if there's RPM there, it knows a fan's installed. If it sees no RPM, it knows the fan's not installed. And so it, it will only freak out if you pull a fan while it's running, because then it'll see the RPM go to zero, and then it'll think it failed. So that's the only, uh, that's the way you can get away with less fans. So I think I, the way I mapped it, um, the middle one is obviously for the CPUs, so that one's definitely um, the one that uh, is connected to a CPU header. And then I think, I think this one is connected to the I.O. because it's got the HBA and stuff in it, and this one's also probably on the, the CPU as well. So that's just the way I've, I've done mine, but depending on your server, um, you know, it's uh, completely up to you. And the other thing is, if you use this on a different size server, you can use different sized fans, and you can even use a combination of different sized fans. Because this is just a solid block when you buy it, um, you can put 120 mil, 140 mil, you know, 380 mils, you know, whatever works best for your airflow configuration, um, it's pretty easy to, uh, to make it. And if you screw up, it's not super expensive. And this works pretty well. You're still going to want to duct on top of the, um, the CPUs, definitely. And normally, uh, this gap is not a big deal because, of course, the top is on and that blocks this off. So don't worry too much about that. Um, I don't run this with the lid off of it, obviously. And the airflow that comes through this is actually pretty pretty decent. Um, so when you feel, you know, the exhaust here, the airflow across the add-in cards is sufficient, in my opinion, to keep them cool. Um, I did at one point have another fan in here, but I removed it because it was, it was unneeded. Now this, this is a 40 millimeter uh, Noctua fan uh, that is just strapped onto the HBA, and uh, this, is, this is something I installed just because I want to make damn sure that the HBA is as cool as possible because if, if these overheat, they will absolutely ruin your day um, because they can corrupt it and all sorts of bad stuff. And at least the older ones, as far as I know, didn't have any temperature sensors, so they would, just, they would just run too hot and then, you know, until they actually failed. So I happen to have this fan, so I put it on here. It's probably not needed, but I had it, and it makes more sense to put it on than to not put it on. Um, but I'm not concerned about the temperatures of anything, and this server has temperatures on all the RAM and all, all sorts of stuff, and everything looks perfectly normal, and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like uh, in just a minute. So that's what this server looks like, and I've also done this to another machine, which I did things a little bit differently. So the last thing that I'll mention is motherboard compatibility with fans. So 
Obviously, these are just four-pin PWM fans, and you'd think it would be fine. However, at least on Super Micro boards, the board management controller is not happy with these fans out of the box. Because when you run the optimal fan profile, where it, you know, PWM's the fans down, then the, the RPM the fans actually go to drops below the lower non-recoverable threshold um, for RPM, and so it believes the fans have failed. So what it does is it then ramps up all of the all the fans to 100%, um, and now they're at you know 3,000 RPM. It sees all those RPMs and goes, okay, you know everything's working. Um, you know the, the the there's no failure anymore. So it PWMs the fans down. Then one of them drops below the the lower threshold, and then it freaks out again, and then it goes back to max RPM, and then it clears the air, and it it keeps uh, oscillating between full speed and the low value and it keeps throwing an alarm and you can't run a system like that uh, it, you really can't it will screw a lot of stuff up it'll fill up the system event log it's it's not good um, and so on at least on the super micro systems you can fix that because the parameters that the board management controller uses for the lower and even the high threshold values you can edit them in IPMI and you can't do it from the web interface um, but you can do it through a command line tool like IPMI tool. And so I'll show you um, exactly how I fix that as well. So as far as getting the BMC to accept uh, lower RPM fans, all you need is sort of the Linux utility uh, IPMI tool. Uh, it's also available on FreeBSD and other things. So if you're running um, you know, TrueNAS or something, you can also use it. Um, you can also uh, run it on an external machine. Um, and just connect over the network as long as the management interface has an IP address. Uh, you can remotely connect to it with a username and password, or if you're running the tool on the actual machine itself, you can just, uh, as long as you're root and you, know, you have a driver in the OS, uh, you can communicate directly to the BMC on the board. And uh, so you can see, you know, this is, this is, these are all the sensors in that machine. It's got quite a lot of them. Um, and you can see uh, all the fans here. Um, they're listed. They've got the current RPM. So you can see right now the server's under uh, a bit of load. Um, so we're at, you know, 12, 1300 RPM. The 3400 RPM is the little tiny um, 40 millimeter fan on the host bus adapter. So really we're around 1200 RPM. Um, and you can see these are the thresholds. Um, so I've set the lower thresholds to the lowest that they go, which is 100 RPM and 200 RPM. And this fan usually goes down to uh, 300 RPM. Um, and so these are... Uh, you know, these are below that, so we don't have any problems, and of course no one cares about the maximums. So you can change these thresholds um, using IPMI tool as well. So the commands that uh, I ran look something like this, um, where basically you're just setting the threshold for your fans, um, the lower limits to the three values, which are lower non-recoverable, and I think it's, I think it's low, air, low error, low warning, something like that. I, I can't remember exactly what uh, what the, the top two are. But really, um, you just set them to low values. At least on the super micro boards, you can punch in like one RPM and it will just adjust it to the lowest value. So, you know, if I put in 50, 100, 150, um, it looks like it only accepts 100, 100, 200. My other server is like 75, 75, you know, whatever. But really, no PWM fan is really going to go that slowly. So you don't really have to worry um, about, about it not going all the way down to zero. Uh, and the nice thing about this, rather than trying to defeat it somehow, uh, is that if the fan does fail and does actually stop, you will still get an alarm. Um, so you, you're not actually you know, defeating it, um, unfortunately, which is really, really great. So um, that's the, the easy way to do this. And I'm pretty sure there's something like this on other platforms. Um, it's just uh, you, you're going to have to look at, uh, look at the documentation um, for uh, your, your particular server. Although IPMI is a standard, so... Uh, it's a quasi-standard. All the manufacturers have slight differences. So um, I would definitely take a look at IPMI tool if, if you can't find anything in the, you know, the web management interface for your server, um, if, it, if it has an oscillation issue or if it just throws an alarm saying the fan is, you know, has a problem. Um, so that's, uh, that's, it for, that's it for the software. So here is the other server that I have. This is my older server, the one that the other one replaced. And this is I'm, use, I'm using for backup. And so I did the uh, the exact same treatment to this. This chassis looks almost identical. It is slightly different. Um, but as far as the cooling goes, it's exactly the same. And so I, I did things a little differently for this one. I wanted to try uh, slower fans. 
So uh, this one here, you can see uh, this one I've added a little uh, little cardboard sort of uh, thing that connects the uh, the fan wall to the um, to the uh, fan shroud. This is completely unnecessary, and I'm actually going to remove it because, as I found, it does absolutely nothing, and also this tape does not stay. So oh, I'll just get rid of this because that, yeah, that has no no actual intrinsic value. Um, and uh, so anyway, the uh, this looks very similar, as you can see. Um, same thing, pinches in here on this side. It's got a little wedge that uh, holds it in on that side. And it's three 120 millimeter fans, exactly the same. Um, this has got uh, you know, DDR3 memory, it's uh, older CPUs, um, and it has a, a, a SAS 2008 HBA, uh, no InfiniBand, no other add-in cards. Um, and this one, instead of using the, uh, the industrial PPC fans, it uses their, uh, their Chromax black fans, um, and uh, it was, obviously I don't need the Chromax black ones, uh, it just happened to be that they were actually more available and cheaper than the regular brown ones, um, but these, these cross-reference with their, I think it's the, uh, the S12A PWM, um, which you can get usually for cheaper than the Chromax ones, and they're exactly the same spec, they're just brown, and who cares what they look like. So I bought these fans, and unfortunately, um, I wouldn't say that they're they're very gr very great. Um, they they I would not recommend them. Is really what I'm saying. They don't work too well. Um, if they PWM down um, to you know if you use the same sort of optimal fan profile, uh, the CPUs and everything it runs a little too hot for my liking. Uh, and I'm also a little concerned about the airflow over add-in cards. So uh, what I've done because the system is is a backup server, it's not it's not running all the time. Um, I decided to just set the fan profile to full speed, um, and so when the system boots up, it just runs the fans at full tilt. Um, and these these fans at 100% RPM uh, are louder than the IPPC fans at optimal low speed. So I would still recommend buying the IPPC fans if you if you know if you, if you want to copy my fans, um, than using anything slower than that, just because you're going to probably have to run them full speed, and I'm not totally sure um, how this will handle a full CPU load. Um, in my application, it works perfectly fine, um, but I, I would probably not go with these fans if I was to do uh, anything different. And similarly, um, like I mentioned earlier, uh, the power supply fans. So these are the power supplies that are in here, and so to give you a proper part number on here, these are the uh, PWS 1K28P-SQ, so the dash SQ is the super quiet, and um, that's obviously what you want because uh, it has two fans in here. You can actually see how thick this, this black area, that's where the two fans are, um, and uh, there, there's, a, 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 there's a really thick one and a really thin one, and I think it's, uh, you know, one's for static pressure, one's for airflow, um, and they're independently controlled, and uh, these are actually pretty pretty smart uh, power supplies. They've got multiple thermal monitors, current monitors. You can measure the RPM of the fans and all sorts of good stuff. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to see, you know, could I make it quieter? Because you can hear even when they're off, the fan is still spinning. Um, and so it, it always runs at this low RPM because the fans are, or these uh, power supplies are 12 volt only. And uh, they have, well, actually I shouldn't say that. They do have a 5 volt output as well. Um, but for the 5 volt standby and everything, they always uh, keep the fans running. So I wanted to try and reduce the uh, the noise, so I took one of these Noctua uh, 40 mil fans here, and uh, I sort of installed it here, and I, I I was able to wire it up successfully as a PWM fan, and it's booting up. So there you go, it's booting up um, because it's uh, 215, and that's when it does its daily backup. So the fans come on actually at low RPM, and you'll hear you'll hear them go full speed actually. Uh, once the uh, system posts, but uh, in the meantime, I was able to install another fan. Um, be, basically, I just had to bridge the PWM, or sorry, not the PWM, the, the tachometer um, from the fan to both fan headers because the power supply will shut down if it doesn't see a, P, a tachometer from both fans. Um, so you just need to just duplicate it. You just take the PWM from whichever header you want and run it to the fan. Um, but Unfortunately, for sort of the same reason um, as, you know, the motherboard would consider slow fans to have failed, um, if it PWMs this fan, it also considers it to have failed. 
So unfortunately, the only way I was able to get this fan to work in this power supply was to just disconnect the PWM signal so the fan runs at 100% all the time. And this fan at 100% all the time is louder than the original fan. So while this is possible, um, I wouldn't recommend doing it. And also the amount of air that this produces at 100% is comparable to the airflow that the, uh, the original produces at, uh, you know, slightly, uh, you know, slightly above idle RPM. Yeah, now you can hear it. So the fans have now gone to their 100% speed. Uh, may maybe that's going to pick it up on camera, I don't know. But uh, I've tried this, I don't recommend doing this. It doesn't, doesn't really make a lot of sense. So this server doesn't need redundant power supplies, so I've just... I just leave this one in here, but it's not plugged in all the way, because if I plug it in all the way, I get an alarm. Um, and so this is just a, a spare power supply, um, because this is actually the same model of power supplies in my, my production server, so I can just do that. But yeah, I don't recommend changing those. Um, so I'm going to put the, uh, the cover on, because uh, I need it as an air baffle. So that about wraps this up. I uh, hope that I haven't missed anything important. I, you know, of course, wish that I had footage of doing this, but um, I don't, so... Uh, this is about the best I can do. Um, I hope this has given people uh, enough information that, uh, you know, you can go try this on your own servers. Um, I'm very happy with the results. It's been, you know, it's been a blessing how quiet um, everything's been. So I'm, I'm very happy. And uh, I, I think that this is a, a superior option to building your own fan wall out of other materials. Um, but I haven't seen people use foam. Um, and I'm not really quite sure why. Uh, it may not look as pretty as something 3D printed or whatever, but it's uh, it's outside a metal box that no one's ever going to see, so I don't really see that being an issue. And another thing that uh, I know some people might ask is, well, what about the safety aspect of it? Um, and, well, the foam, foam, first of all, of course, is not electrically conductive, so you don't have to worry about that. And as far as fire goes, um, a lot of, because the, the foam is used um, for things like flooring, um, I believe that it has to have uh, flame retardants in it. Um, I, I may be wrong about that, but I believe it is designed to be flame retardant. Um, so it, it's very likely um, less flammable than the other plastics and other stuff in the server. Um, and it's also generally quite far away from anything that would normally be on fire anyway. Um, fans don't generally tend to catch fire. so. Um, I wouldn't be too worried about that. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's it for this, and uh, until next time, bye.